Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about a really useful compositional tool, and that's called Framing Elements. And the whole idea here is that you're going to intentionally add elements to your scene that will help keep the viewer's eye in the center of your image, to stop the eyes from wandering off the sides and edges. Because right here you can see that there's really nothing enclosing this image. Now here I've added in a little bit of a doorway, and immediately you can tell the image feels more restrained. I'm not going to be looking off the left or the right side of the image, instead I'm going to look at the character. Now I've done these as a silhouette, although you don't need to do that. Really all you're doing is using large visual shapes to help cage in the illustration. But the neat part about framing elements is that you can use them to describe the setting. So here the door frame is pretty boring. But if I were to add in some decorative elements, some highly detailed close-up objects, it would just tell you more about the setting. So the castle that might have these elaborate torch holders would be different than one with nothing on the walls at all. Or potentially, it's in a cave. And so instead of a normal doorway, I'd have a much more irregular shape with some mushrooms and vines hanging. And I don't need to give a lot of details here. It's really just using shape to tell the story. So with this composition, you have no problem staying on the character and the focal point, and your eyes are very trapped inside the image, and that's a good idea. So if we flip this around a bit, you can also use it to help tell about images that are not in the frame at all. So this orc is scared. Now what is he scared of? Well, maybe he's scared of a giant crowd that's coming to get him. So here again, I'm using low detail silhouetted forms, but their shape tells the story. So even though you know there are big orcs in the foreground, you're still focusing on the one whose face you can see. The ones in the foreground just help further the narrative. And you could take this same idea and apply it to the shadow cast by a looming dragon. And in this case, the dragon is not pictured at all, but his cast shadow creates a framing element. It's a large shape that directs the eye and surrounds the focal point. So in this painting, I used a flock of birds as a framing element. And I added a little extra directionality to the birds to point towards the focal point. Here you can see I have sort of a steampunk subway tunnel. And here I've just used simple figures in the foreground as framing elements. Again, not a lot of detail, but they keep your eye in the right direction. So here I've put the viewer inside of a elaborate window. And sometimes it's nice to have this foreground framing element give some structural detail to tell exactly where the viewer is standing. It helps ground the object in time and space. In this case, there's no silhouetting happening. I'm simply using large architectural elements to cage in the form. And in this case, the dragon is actually roped down. And so having him in a tight courtyard adds to that sense of restriction. And in this final painting, you can see that the framing element is not much more foreground than the character itself. It's more of a decorative element, almost like it would be on a playing card. But whatever the story is that you're telling in your illustration, odds are you can put some sort of an intentional frame around the character. A good frame will be almost invisible to your audience, but it will keep their eye where it's supposed to be, and it'll help set the scene. So have fun, and go make some framing elements. Thanks for watching, guys.